I am here with a very old friend of mine, Kirsten Rogers, who I first met in 1984 when she was a photographer. And she took this rather infamous photograph of me with my dog, amongst other things. What was your dog called? Cerebus. Sorry. And if I remember rightly, you'd rang me up, and I didn't know you, and she rang me, she was a young photographer, and she'd said, could she take my picture, I've met you somewhere. And At a club, probably. Probably. And because I think in those days we all used to help each other out a lot, I'd said yes, and that's how we met. And I can remember being very, very impressed because she was very quick. Yes, very I'm quick. quick about everything. But maybe it was so because none of us had any money in those days and you were renting the studio. Yes, very possibly. There was yeah. a, an element of that. So you were a photographer? Well, yes. Well, I still am. Okay. I think you never stop being a photographer. Um, I'll always be a photographer. But now my main emphasis is the cooking, yeah. uh, making events, creating yeah. events. How long did you work as a photographer? Um, I started about the age of 18 uh, until now. Okay. Ten years. And in those old days, like in our old days, all those years ago, <laughs> what did you do? Fashion, music? Well, when I started out, I started out working for the NME um, as a sort of teen rock photographer. Um, I, I mean, I didn't have a proper portfolio. I didn't know how to do this. I just went to the NME with my all my prints in a sort of plastic bag and just dumped them on the desk. Said, "What do you think of that?" <laughs> and they gave me some work. And I was to photograph various groups. I was also working for people like Smash Hits and an equivalent called Number One magazine. Uh -huh. um, and then gradually I moved into doing portraits, quite fashiony stuff for Honey magazine. Yes. Nineteen, remember yes, all those? I remember them well. Um, I also did a bit of fashion for the Sunday Times, some portraits and reportage for the Observer. Uh -huh. I worked quite a lot for Cosmopolitan and um, She. And you know, pretty good stuff. I had a pretty successful you career. You had a good career. Yeah. And then you changed. I've always cooked. I've cooked since I was four years old. Which brings us very neatly into the present day because roll on, what, 20 odd years and Kirsten actually has a very famous AKA, she is Miss Marmite Lover and she is the purveyor of, I say the first, you say one of two, but I say okay, the first underground restaurant, i.e. restaurant in your living room. And I think we ought to move into the living room and we can have a look at the restaurant. Come and see the underground restaurant. So tell us about the underground restaurant. It's been going since uh, January 2009. Mm -hmm. So I was cooking um, at festivals, various cafes, and I was getting frustrated working for other places and thought I want to do my food. And I'd like to have my own restaurant or cafe, but I don't have any money. Mm. How am I going to do this? In the year 2000, I went to Cuba and went to visit Paladaris, mm -hmm. which are like home restaurants in Cuba. I thought, this is a brilliant idea, this is going to work in London. Um, you know, you go to a city, uh, you go to see the sites, you never feel a part of it unless you actually go to someone's home yeah. or meet a Londoner. Yeah. Um, and going to meet a Londoner in their house, eating their food, is, is a way to get to know a city. It's a brilliant idea. So do you feel that what it's become now is actually what you want it to be, a very nice restaurant in your living room? Yes. Um, I suppose what I'm also doing, what I want it to be, is some kind of forum or salon for an exchange of ideas, okay. networking, but not in that kind of slightly media RC sense, yeah, yeah. but genuine networking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for people you know, to find jobs, to make relationships, yeah. to make friendships, and for new things to arise out of that. Yeah. Uh, that, that idea excites me. I mean, I'm moving into conferences now. Um, in, in February, I did a How to Become a Successful Food Blogger conference. Slightly naff title, but it worked. I had four lecturers. Um, I provided a, a sort of business brunch, delegates badges, um, an agenda, and then a, a lunch. Now, normally you go to a conference in some dull hotel, you get a curled ham sandwich. Sure. It's a pretty awful affair, mm. on a catering level at least. Mm. And this was beautiful food, drink, mm. lots of style in an intimate setting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had writers like Tim Hayward of The Garden sitting next to my fireplace, you know, and giving his secrets about how to become a successful writer. Or Laura James who runs a PR company and writes cookery books, how to write a recipe, which is not as obvious as you might think. Mm -hmm. um, a food photographer came and showed people how to take really good food photography, mm -hmm. um, how to work it on your laptop, because it's all digital now, and how to upload it onto your blog. 
it was a really, really positive conference. People went away buzzing, literally. So there'll be more of those. There's going to be a craft one, yeah. one, and I'd love to have a political one here, sort of anti-G8 summit mm -hmm. here. But just because you're talking about politics and left of centre politics and politics and anarchy and new ideas doesn't mean you have to eat badly. I agree. And be shabby. You can still do it with style. I, I agree. Think. Now you, of course, have been to the underground farmers and craft market. I have, and I have been involved in the past, and I will be involved again in the future. So tell them a bit about that. Well, you did your your seeds in these beautiful vintage packets. Um, what I'm trying to do is again help start seed new businesses. Mm -hmm. So um, people either pay no stall cost or a very low stall cost. And it's open to people who make crafts or food entrepreneurs. I'm particularly interested in urban food makers. Like even in London, people are making their own honey, making their own cheese, uh, making their own cordials and liqueurs, um, preserving things. Um, and, and I'm encouraging them. They may only make sort of 20 jars a year. Come here and sell them yeah. or your glut, you know, can your glut. And have a fabulous time because it is a whole event in itself. It's very different from a normal farmer's market, which is often in some windy car park somewhere. Mm. And, you know, I try to also make quite a selection of the stalls to only have people with really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. You're coming into a home, we use every part of my flat, garden and shed. I think you were in the shed last in the time. Shed, yeah. Um, it's a beautiful little wooden shed. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, and I've been out here in the sunshine also, perfect. On the balcony, yeah. yeah. And uh, in the kitchen there's cooking demonstrations, little chats. Uh, in the bedroom there's the cocktail bar on the ironing board. Um, there, I have live music, there's a bonfire, so people can eat hot food at the time or buy food to take away. So I do get farmers coming down from quite far away mm -hmm. um, and selling, you know, uh, you could order, I had the Christmas market, you could order a turkey for mm -hmm. Christmas, but they're selling really fresh eggs, fresh bacon. Oh, it's a wonderful event. We also have to say congratulations to you, because I know that just in the last week and a half or so, Supper Club, Kirsten's book, has just hit the bookshelves. So tell us about the book. Um, well, I, I, I guess it's two years in the making. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautifully designed. Mm -hmm. There's 120 recipes uh, and 10 meat recipes by um, guest chefs from other supper clubs. There's a chapter on my history. There's a, um, the story of Ms. Marmite Lover. There's a chapter on the history of supper clubs. Uh, there's a how-to chapter, how to start up your own with advice. The recipe section and at the back there's a directory of worldwide supper clubs so if you don't live in London wherever you live in the world you can look it up or go to my site and see where your local supper club is it's fabulous